right, hey, you Affleck ducks. Welcome to Bare Naked Reviews. I'm Rishi B, and I'm reviewing the 2016 Amazon surprise hit, Manchester by the Sea, till it's bare naked. <laughs> Before we get into it, I wanted to let you all know you can be a guest of honor and pick the topic of a future episode by giving feedback via email to Reviews at gmail, liking, sharing posts at the Facebook page or the YouTube account, sending tweets to at Revs or leaving reviews on iTunes. Please leave reviews. Leave positive reviews, hopefully. Uh, There's been fans who've requested all sorts of things. There's been opening movies they've asked for episodes of, or they've asked for uh, recommendations on whether to watch certain shows or not, like Westworld. So be involved in the show. And you can get more naked at rishib.com. All right, everyone, settle down, settle down, relax. It's time for the synopsis to Manchester by the Sea. Due to the death of his brother, Lee Chandler, played by Casey Affleck, returns to his hometown of Manchester-by-the-Sea, Massachusetts, to look after his brother's assets and only son Patrick, who's played by Lucas Hedges. Unbeknownst to Lee, his brother's will leaves his son Patrick to his uncle Lee, who, as the movie plays out, appears to have a visceral hatred of Manchester and hadn't been back in many, many years. Lee struggles to find internal peace as he figures out how his decisions will impact his nephew. All right, starting off here, spoiler free, Casey Affleck and Michelle Williams do some excellent acting here. Uh, It's worth watching just to see their characters play out and how the story all unfolds, it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, All throughout the movie, you don't know what happened. You don't understand why is Casey Affleck so, like, morose all the time. People are joking around him and stuff, and he just gives nothing. Uh, Women will uh, flirt with him, and he just gives them zero. You could tell that he's struggling very hard against something, but you're not exactly sure if that's just in his head or is that something that's real. What What is his demons? What is that internal sadness that uh, he's, he's projecting? So from the beginning of the movie, you're kind of with Casey Affleck's character, Lee, the uncle. But it's kind of against your will. Like I said, you kind of wonder, is he just being an asshole just to be an asshole? But by the end, you find out what Casey's character has been battling and then you kind of realize that that the entire time it's like the movie was fighting to get him on your your good side. So just a couple tidbits here. The town Manchester by the Sea used to be called Manchester until 1989 when resident Edward Corley led a highly controversial campaign to formally change its name to Manchester by the Sea. I can't imagine what the controversy there was besides wanting to change the name of a town. And the action was then passed by the state legislature that same year. One thing of note here, Matt Damon has a producer credit. According to an interview with the director, Kenneth Lonergan, uh, the idea for the film didn't originate with Kenneth. The main core of the character going back home to take care of a family member after a death uh, was pitched to Kenneth Lonergan by Matt Damon and John Krasinski, who people might remember as Jim from The Office. They had this as a script, but due to scheduling conflicts with The Martian, Matt Damon couldn't direct the film or star in it. And so then it was passed on to Casey Affleck for for him to be in it. And then one last little uh, tidbit here. There's some racial controversy with the movie. Uh, Manchester by the Sea, almost immediately after getting out into the theater, was highly acclaimed by critics. The Oscar nominations are out now, and Manchester by the Sea got some good got some good looks with that. Uh, in 2016, we had the movie Birth of a Nation by a guy named uh, Nate Parker. And there was a lot of controversy because both Casey Affleck and Nate Parker... Both have uh, sexual harassment uh, charges against them in their past. And Casey Affleck uh, was just pretty much overlooked by the Academy. However, Nate Parker's uh, seems to be leaving a little bit of a, a bad taste 
around his uh, reputation around Hollywood. So his movie's been completely overlooked by the Academy, and there's basically no press for his movie after it came out. And some of it is based off of what I've seen online. Some of it seems to be a little fair. Nate Parker's uh, allegations, they seem to be a little bit more serious than Casey Affleck's. However, it does seem a little hypocritical. Basically, two people have seemingly the same allegations against them, and one guy gets a pass and one guy doesn't. But uh, I'll put a link on that in the show notes, and you can make your own opinions on that. All right, so now let's open the door for spoilers. Spoiler alert! Uh, Manchester by the Sea, it's kind of culturally now known as a Debbie Downer, which it is. Uh, But I think that Manchester by the Sea doesn't get enough credit for kind of hitting you with some good humor uh, while kind of keeping a monotone level. And so I think there's a lot of good humor in the movie that play towards the Bostonian stereotypes that everyone knows and loves about their chowder and their Harvard, Harvard Square, park the car, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's definitely a lot of fun with that. So there's that Dev Patel movie, Dev Patel and Nicole Kidman movie, Lion. Yeah, I thought that was much more of a Debbie Downer than Manchester by the Sea. Manchester by the Sea is probably darker. Still, I thought there was a, at least attempts at humor. So as I said, it's a very monotone pace. And I think that's kind of what Casey Affleck does best. He seems to not really relish the uh, spotlight, but uh, he seems to just kind of grudgingly accept it. It just does so well just because it's like so clearly Casey Affleck's pace and he just totally knocks it out of the park uh, by hitting you with this well-told story and you're, you're not exactly sure the whole time up until uh, until the big reveal uh, towards the end of the movie when you find out what the internal sadness, what all these demons that Casey Affleck was fighting. Casey Affleck and Michelle Williams had three kids together who died in a house fire that was in, inadvertently caused by AC, uh, Casey Affleck's character. And so he's just sort of been battling this his whole entire life, and he's just never returned to Manchester after that incident happened. Last good note that I want to to mention here throughout the movie you kind of jump around in time it's mostly taking place in the present where uh, Casey Affleck is trying to figure out what to do with his nephew and so somewhere in the past uh, Casey Affleck and Michelle Williams were married and the portrayal of their relationship felt very real and very honest it's probably one of the most honest portrayals of a uh, of a marriage that I've seen in uh, in a movie so that that was really refreshing but with the good, there's always the bad. It's bad. Talking about weak sauce. I, I ended up enjoying the movie, but it is very real and very intense what the sadness is about behind this movie. Uh, some people might not be up for that. So I don't know if that's necessarily a bad or if, uh, if it's just a note of that it is what it is. Yeah, so... Uh, this is another thing. This is more something that hit my craw. Is, is that a phrase? Something that crawled my craw was the kid in the movie Patrick. He has two girlfriends that he's sort of juggling throughout the movie. This kid's in middle school, and he's got two girlfriends. Holy cow, I could barely get a girl to look at me, let alone have two girlfriends in uh, middle school. Uh, I, I don't know what I what I should have done. I was playing uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards and playing uh, N64. Uh, maybe I should have turned those off and um, joined the hockey team like this kid did. Michelle Williams' acting is really great, and she's only in the movie for like a little bit. So that's uh, pretty cool for her to take advantage of that little bit that she has and knock it out of the park. Uh, so in, in finality, in finality, I'm going to give... Uh, Manchester by the Sea, I'm going to give it out of a ranking of seven boats in the sea, uh, in the Manchester by the Sea Sea, the sea by Manchester by the Sea, six out of seven boats in the sea. I I think it's a uh, good movie, and I think it's worth a watch. All right, that's a wrap. There it is. Watch the boom as it booms all around. Bare naked reviews in your town. 
Well, not in town, but be a digital means. Get off your butt and join the naked team, y'all. The naked, the naked team, y'all. The naked team, y'all.